2nd Tank Battalion was one of three tank battalions in the United States Marine Corps and was located in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina as part of the 2nd Marine Division. 2nd Tank Battalion's history spans nearly 80 years, dating back to some of the most intense fighting of World War II, through the Cold War, and across some of the most intense fighting of the last two decades in Iraq and Afghanistan. 2nd Tank Battalion began as a single company called Abel Company in May of 1941. Abel Company's first overseas assignment was to Iceland with the 1st Marine Brigade under the command of Major John H. Cook. The company was organized around the 6th Marine Regiment to establish a garrison. Following the infamous attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, 2nd Tank Battalion officially formed on December 20th of 1941. It was assigned as a standard organization with the Headquarters and Service Company and its own four tank companies. Abel Company, 2nd Tank Battalion, soon left Iceland and returned to the United States where they reported back to 2nd Marine Division, then located at Camp Elliott, California. It was all but official, 2nd Tank Battalion was preparing for war, and in quick fashion. By March of 1942, Baker Company was on its way to the island of Samoa for defensive operations after the island was threatened by Japanese submarines. Charlie Company sailed with 2nd Marine Regiment to Tulagi Island to be part of the famous Guadalcanal Campaign, the first major campaign of the Pacific Theater. The U.S. and its allies needed to rid the Japanese from the Solomon Islands in order to secure transport lanes from the U.S. to the Pacific fronts. The airfield, named Henderson Field, was one of the top priorities to secure. The initial landing was unopposed, but later days saw significant action across the island as the Japanese attempted to re-secure it. The battle for Guadalcanal began in August of 1942 as part of an assault against fortified Japanese naval infantry. This assault completed a hat trick of the 1st for the battalion, 1st Tank Company in the Pacific Theater, the 1st Tank Company to deploy to a war theater, and the 1st Tank Company in combat. After the success in the Guadalcanal campaign, Allied forces prepared for future operations for 2nd Tank Battalion, the worst fighting was still to come. The Battle of Tarawa took place as part of Operation Galvanic from 20 to 23 November 1943 to recover the Gilbert Islands in the Pacific Ocean northeast of Australia. Tarawa was the first major offensive operation in the Central Pacific as Allied forces sought the need for land-based bombers to be used in support of amphibious landings throughout the war. The Marshall Islands were cut off from the U.S. via the island of Basio. Securing Basio and the remainder of the Tarawa Atoll was decided to be done to advance on the Marshalls. The hardest fighting of this battle was on the small island of Basio on the southwest of the Tarawa Atoll. The physical nature of the island of Basio and the dug-in, hard-fighting Japanese forces made landing tanks on the island extremely difficult. The landing craft were unable to advance onto the beaches on the first day of the assault, leaving some 5,000 Marines stranded without support. Marines had to resort to dropping off the tanks many yards from the shores. The tanks had to crush through coral reefs and deep craters created by artillery shells. In order to get tanks to the beaches, the assistant drivers had to dismount and guide the tanks ashore under constant enemy fire. On the second day, due to favorable tide conditions, the Navy's ship-to-shore vessels were able to transport the reserve combat teams, support craft, and tanks. With the bulk of the landing forces ashore, the Marines were able to launch offensive operations against the Japanese pillboxes and fortifications. The fighting would end 76 hours after the invasion. Battalion commander of the Second Tank Battalion, he requested permission to land, and they hit the reef close to the end of the pier, and got out to wait ashore. And he had my maintenance people and all of those with him. 
And I lost, I lost a lot of them in the water. After the Battle of Tarawa in late 1943, early 1944, 2nd Tank Battalion reorganized in Hawaii into four companies. After more than 1,000 troops were killed in the fighting on Tarawa, U.S. commanders learned important lessons that would be applied to the future atolls. In Hawaii, the battalion sought out to establish new training tactics and procedures using the experience learned in the battles of Tarawa and Guadalcanal. As a result, companies A, B, and C became medium tank companies after the light tanks proved to be ineffective against Japanese defense positions. Dog Company became the flame tank company utilizing the M3A1 Satan tanks augmented with M5A1s. In June and July 1944, 2nd Tank Battalion redeployed to the Pacific to take part in the Marianas and Palau Island campaign. The battalion attached companies to support the landings across Saipan and Tinian. The conquest of Saipan became the most daring and disturbing operation in the U.S. war against Japan. And when it was over, the United States held islands that could place B-29 bombers within range of Tokyo. Initial intelligence estimates expected a light resistance on the island of Saipan. It was believed that Japanese forces had planned for the U.S. to attack further to the south. However, Japanese resistance proved far greater than anticipated, not least of all because the latest intelligence reports had underestimated troop levels. For at least a month, Japanese forces had been fortifying the island and bolstering its forces. The importance of Saipan was clear. Securing the island would sever supply and communication lines from mainland Japan to its forces distributed around the South Pacific. In Saipan, Abel, Baker, and Charlie companies of 2nd Tank Battalion landed with the infantry to secure the beachhead. Here, a platoon from Baker Company took part in the largest tank battle of the Pacific Theater. Imperial Japanese forces attacked the Marines with 44 light and medium tanks. At the end, the company's combined efforts helped destroy 32 Japanese tanks while not losing a single Marine tank. On June 28, during the push for the town of Giripin, Charlie Company destroyed six of seven Japanese tanks. The Japanese forces counterattacked with 4,000 infantrymen supported by light and medium tanks. During this counterattack, Sergeant Timmerman conducted his heroic actions that earned him a Medal of Honor. In Tinian, 2nd Tank Battalion clearly demonstrated its refined TTPs and adaptability by integrating tank infantry plans and tactics learned in Tarawa. They mutually supported each other to overcome the defenses laid out by the Imperial Japanese forces. Tanks from Dog Company, the Satans, were utilized to burn out the underbrush while the medium and light tanks were used to suppress Japanese positions, allowing the infantry to advance. Despite their tactics, Marines still suffered heavy losses, even as the tankers continued. A tank from Charlie Company, 2nd Platoon, was hit by a Japanese Type 1 47mm anti-tank gun. We didn't land until the second day because of the very narrow landing beaches. But, but the Tinian was very different because Tinian has more flat land and uh, it did not have as big a population. Tinian, Tinian was in many ways a, a cakewalk until you got down to the tail end of it where you ran into a lot of resistance. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, we moved at the, at the pace of the infantry, which was fairly, fairly fast. Then again, as I say, until they got down where they had to go up the last ridge. And then there, there was a lot of resistance. 
the island of Okinawa was seen as the last step prior to making ground attack onto the Japanese home island. This battle was the bloodiest of the Pacific Theater, claiming the lives of over 12,000 Americans and 100,000 Japanese. Additionally, over 100,000 civilians were either killed or ordered to commit suicide by Japanese as the Allied forces advanced across the island. Able Company reinforced 1st and 6th Tank Battalions during the Battle of Okinawa. After the Battle of Okinawa, 2nd Tank Battalion moved back to Saipan to prepare for the invasion of mainland Japan. But from this solemn occasion, a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. After Japan surrendered in 1945, 2nd Tank Battalion served nine months in Nagasaki, providing defense around the regimental camps. After World War II ended, 2nd Marine Division moved all its units, including 2nd Tank Battalion, to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. At the end of World War II, the country of Korea was administered as two separate areas divided at the 38th parallel. In 1948, these two areas called themselves a country and a fight for equilibrium and control emerged. In June 25, 1950, a new war began when North Korea forces invaded South Korea. U.S. forces that were pre-positioned there immediately responded and fought against the invasion. 2nd Tank Battalion provided support to this war, augmenting personnel to tank battalions on the west coast and providing replacements during the conflict. Some of the senior members of 2nd Tank Battalion provided cadre for 8th Tank Battalion, a wartime expansion force. 2nd Tank Battalion itself continued training and routine deployments from the east coast of the U.S., traveling to the Caribbean and the Mediterranean Sea. 1st Platoon, Delta Company, 2nd Tank Battalion, deployed with the Marine Amphibious Unit when called upon by the way of the Suez Canal to join 1st Marine Division for an amphibious landing at Incheon. This amphibious landing broke the hold of the Marines and soldiers fighting at the Pusan perimeter. In the years after the Korean War, 2nd Tank Battalion continued to provide support around the world. In July of 1958, Alpha Company, 2nd Tank Battalion landed in Lebanon, taking part in Operation Blue Bat to protect against internal threats in the country. The company supported in securing the Beirut International Airport. After securing the airport, the force was to move to the Beirut port and secure approaches to the city. The operation ended with the peaceful transfer of power between Presidential Shimon and President-elect General Shihad. In October of 1962, 2nd Platoon of Charlie Company embarked upon USS Lindenwald in August and toured the Caribbean for three months. On the way home, they landed on Guantanamo Bay on October 22nd. The deteriorating relations with Cuba had already caused the 2nd Marine Division to furnish a garrison detachment to the U.S. naval base at Guantanamo, beginning in 1961. Well, Cuba, we went there with a company of uh, infantry from uh, the 6th Marines. It was one company and then one platoon of tanks, which was uh, five gun tanks plus two uh, flame tanks. And our job was to assist them in uh, protecting and guarding uh, the ridge line, we called it, where the wire was that separated communist uh, Cuba from, uh, from Gitmo. As the Cold War continued to heat up, 2nd Tank Battalion remained prepared to respond to contingencies. In October 1962, it was evident that Cuba's cooperation with the USSR was becoming a threat to the continental United States when intermediate ballistic missile sites were observed by reconnaissance aircraft. The battalion deployed again as part of the blockade force responding to the resulting Cuban Missile Crisis. Following diplomatic agreements with Cuba and the USSR, the battalion returned to Camp Lejeune in early December where it resumed peacetime deployments. In August of 1982, 2nd Tank Battalion was part of the 22nd, 24th, and 32nd Marine Amphibious Units deployed to Beirut, Lebanon as part of a multinational force to help bring back peace after a bloody civil war had erupted there.
In the beginning of 1983, tankers from 2nd Tank Battalion trained Lebanese forces in diesel maintenance as well as provided support as rapid response against rocket attacks and small arms engagements. It was during this deployment that Marines endured one of the worst attacks on U.S. personnel when on October 23, 1983, a suicide bomber made his way into the Marine Corps barracks in Beirut and blew himself up, killing 241 Marine, Navy, and Army personnel, including members of 2nd Tank Battalion. I know there are no words that can express our sorrow and grief over the loss of those splendid young men and the injury to so many others. I know there are no words also that can ease the burden of grief for the families of those young men. The force still remained in a defense posture until April of 1984 when President Ronald Reagan ordered the withdrawal of troops from the Beirut conflict. Even while tank forces from 2nd Tank Battalion were in Beirut, the 22nd Marine Amphibious Unit with a platoon from Alpha Company, 2nd Tank Battalion, landed in Grenada to defend against destabilizing political conditions there. After World War II, 2nd Tank Battalion provided support to conflicts with augmented tank companies, platoons, and personnel. It was not until the Gulf War that the battalion as a whole deployed again to combat with the 2nd Marine Division. In 1991, 2nd Tank Battalion deployed to Saudi Arabia for a liberation of Kuwait, fully equipped with the new M1A1 under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Cardi. Uh, we transitioned from the uh, M60A1 to the M1A1 uh, main battle tank and uh, took it to uh, Desert Storm in uh, January of 91. Utilizing an overwhelming force doctrine with the M1A1, 2nd Tank Battalion far outgunned Iraqi armor. During the battle for Kuwait International Airport, Bravo Company, 4th Tank Battalion, was attached to 2nd Tank Battalion when they fought in the Reveille engagement, which was seen as the biggest and fastest tank battle in Marine Corps history. The company did not know they were outnumbered 3 to 1 when they woke up the morning of 25 February. They saw enemy tanks moving close to them, and within 90 seconds, the whole company was on the attack to destroy them all. Within seven minutes, the company had destroyed over 37 tanks and personnel carriers and took over 70 prisoners of war. It's a wonderful thing when you can see the puff of white smoke in the distance. And I'm talking Desert Storm as a driver. See a puff of white smoke in the distance, like that's, that's all bad. You know, and you start backing up as a platoon. Uh, and then the gunner's laid on and it's pulling the trigger. And you see the fireball. It's like, well, that's all good. During Gulf War conflict, 2nd Tank Battalion supported infantry regiments and served as the division reserve. By the end of the conflict, 2nd Tank Battalion had taken over 800 prisoners of war and destroyed over 116 enemy vehicles. After the ceasefire and the war ended, the battalion conducted retrograde operations and began redeploying to Camp Lejeune. The decision not to continue operations further into Iraq to either kill or capture Saddam Hussein would cause issues in 2003. American 11, are you trying to call? The cockpit is not answering their phone. Our number one has been staffed and our five has been staffed. I am going to call from Washington. I am in a situation where the Americans learned a possible hijack. What's going on, Betty? The crap is erratic again. On September 11, 2001, terrorists hijacked commercial airplanes and flew them into the towers of the World Trade Center in New York City, killing all aboard, hundreds working in the towers that day, and ultimately brought the Twin Towers to the ground. Other attacks included a strike at the Pentagon and other failed attacks. Close to 3,000 Americans died that day, along with many citizens from other countries. America responded to the nation's harboring terrorists with an operation to clear out those behind the terrorist attacks. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. 
tanks were in the forefront of the ground battle, pushing through Iraq to remove Saddam Hussein from power and free the Iraqi people from the Iraqi regime. Second Tank Battalion participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom, deploying on January 11, 2003, attached to 1st Marine Division's RCT-5 under the command of Colonel Joseph Dumford. Operation Iraqi Freedom was made of two main phases. The first was conventional combat, which saw to the destruction of Iraq's military and paramilitary organizations. The second and longer portion was the occupation of Iraq to assist with rebuilding the broken nation. This was made difficult with the insurgency that formed during the vacuum of power after the Iraqi government was dismantled. On March 20, 2nd Tank Battalion, led by Lieutenant Colonel Mike Ohl, crossed with RCT-5 across the southern border of Iraq on the way to Baghdad. They were part of the first unit to cross into Iraq. The battalion fought through battles on the road to Baghdad and places like An Numanaya, Al Azizia, and eastern Baghdad. We went, uh, crossed over, uh, and we had some detected mine activity, didn't hit any mines, but we worked our way through uh, and went uh, 50 kilometers north uh, to where uh, we were just west of. Uh, is it Basra, I guess the town south, uh, southern town of, uh, and we, we, there was an intersection, a uh, road junction up there that wanted us to secure, so we busted up there. In Numanaya, tanks were in front clearing the way for infantry marines to cross the Tigris River. Facing significant enemy resistance along Route 27, 2nd Tank Battalion pressed forward while receiving rocket-propelled grenades, machine gun, and small arms fire. Only one M1A1 was designated a mobility kill. In Azizia, the tanks from 2nd Tank Battalion continued their fight ahead with RCT-5 as the division's main effort along Highway 6. They destroyed T-55 and T-62 tanks, mechanized vehicles, air defense and long-range artillery, and mortars from the Republican Guard. On 4 April 2003, RCT-5 and 2nd Tank Battalion was confronted with several hundred irregular fighters attacking from buildings, trenches, and other defensive positions on both sides of the tanks. After that fight, a blocking position manned by 2nd Tank Battalion killed an Iraqi Republican Guard general as he was trying to escape. During the following days, RCT-5 pressed the attack into Baghdad, encountering hundreds of Saddam Fedayeen fighters until silencing their resistance. Colonel Dumford himself would later remark how he rode the Iron Horse to Baghdad. The Battle for Fallujah, codenamed Operation Phantom Fury, was pivotal in the coalition's fight against the insurgency that had formed in Iraq. The city of Fallujah was left abandoned and heavily damaged after the initial invasion. Looters and Ba'ath Party loyalists took advantage of this and moved into the city. They laid claim to the abandoned buildings and military equipment. The second battle for Fallujah took place in November 2004 with Company Alpha and Company Charlie of 2nd Tank Battalion that provided tank support for the duration of the battle. Fallujah was the most intense urban combat that the United States had seen in over a generation. The tight streets of Fallujah made tank infantry integration essential in the city being reclaimed. Pretty much our role was to support the infantry. We, uh, we made sure that their routes were clear prior to them going in. Uh, at first when we started, you know, like, a, like every good infantryman, they want to be up front. Uh, day one, they learned real fast to let us lead. Whenever someone starts shooting at us, we reacted the opposite the way you should. The infantry went to cover, we came out, almost like gophers trying to find who, who, who is it and where are they at. So we could not only defeat the threat, but kind of talk to the infantry and maneuver them onto whatever objective it may be or whatever the threat was at the time. After six weeks of intense house-to-house -house fighting, coalition forces secured the center of the city, returning control to the Iraqi government. In 2010, the Marines brought their tanks into southern Afghanistan to assist with quelling the rising insurgency in Helmand province. All companies of 2nd Tank Battalion would eventually deploy in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. 
operations in Afghanistan would be dramatically different than previous conflicts. The terrain right off the bat I understood was as a tank commander and as a driver, it was gonna be a challenge. The platoons got all split up. Uh, first platoon is up in Shirgazi. They were with uh, one of the infantry marines units. Like I said, I was with the GLT, I was with the Georgians. And then second and headquarters were over there in Shivani with the uh, headquarters of the infantry battalion. So we all kind of had different missions in different areas, just depending on where you're at and who you're attached to. Uh, just support the infantry. That was our main mission, to support the infantry in, in any way that, that they can use us. If it was providing overwatch for those guys, uh, just eyes on, route clearance, any way that we can support the infantry, that's how we use the tanks. We did not limit ourselves at all. In 2013, the Marines withdrew their tanks as the U.S. and coalition forces began to transition the security responsibility to the Afghanistan military and government. This would be the last combat operation that 2nd Tank Battalion would support. First of all, there's nothing we can't do, bottom line. You know, from a Marine Corps perspective, we can call for fire, we can do infantry. That's the mindset. The mindset is there's absolutely nothing you can put in front of a tanker. They're not going to figure out how to get it done and get it done marvelously. You know, it, when people say, hey, you, you got Army tanks, you got Marine tanks. Well, you got Marine tanks, and you got Marines in Marine tanks. And uh, that's the best part, and the most lethal, lethal part of, of the Iron Horse, is the Marines inside of them and the skill sets that they have in possession, and, and just the drive and competitiveness they have to make themselves better every single day. Since the battles of World War II, from island to island all the way to mainland Japan, from rescue operations to peacekeeping missions, all the way to pushing through enemy fire in the deserts of Iraq, the Marines of 2nd Tank Battalion rode their iron horse, valiant and unafraid.